You know, with fuel prices sky high, have you ever wondered what category of truck is the most fuel efficient? Is it a full-size truck? Is it a heavy-duty truck? Is it a mid-size truck? Or is it a new compact truck? Well, today we're gonna find out because I am driving this brand new Ram 2500. It's a heavy-duty truck with the Cummins. What do you got, Andre? I have a full-size half-ton truck, the Ford F-150. It's hybridized and it's also gas-powered. All right, and uh, what's this green beast you got, Nathan? This is the 2022 Nissan Frontier, and it has a new engine, new transmission, very efficient, mid-size truck. All right, and of course, you can't leave out Case. What do you got, dude? I've got the Hyundai Santa Cruz, and this is what you want on an MPG loop. So the way this works is we fill it up, then we uh, wait for it to click, and then we give it 30 seconds to fill it up completely, and then we go and do the uh, drive route, and then come back and do it all over again. The downside, of course, to having a diesel is it's about a dollar more expensive. And click number two. There we go. That's the last truck topped off, and that means it's time to start our loop. An easier way to do this, of course, would be just to check the truck sticker or go to fueleconomy.gov where you can compare all four trucks to each other. But you know what? We pride ourselves on real world testing because, let's face it, a lot of those numbers the government gives you are based on numbers that the manufacturer gives them, which is based on a formula and not driving in the real world. You might be wondering about the rear axle ratios or the front axle ratios in the case of the Santa Cruz. Well, here are the numbers and take it for what it's worth. Uh, Santa Cruz, 485 to 1. The Frontier, 369 to 1. The Ford F-150, 373 to 1. And of course, the Ram, 373 to 1 as well. But does it matter? Yeah, it matters. Which one is more fuel efficient? The lower to 1 or the higher to 1? The lower number is usually better for efficiency. The higher numbers are better for pulling power. So which has the best axle ratio for fuel efficiency? I think Dayton. Tonneau cover. Yeah, that's right. No tonneau cover, not only that, but a bunch of Nissan accessories. Bad for aerodynamics and weight. Oh, but Andre has a tonneau cover. Guess what? So does Roman on this truck. I feel like I'm being sabotaged already. Fortunately, I do have the best actual ratio. Hey guys, so here we are going on the highway. Uh, and uh, let's have a little chat, huh? I'm going to give you some numbers just to scare you a little bit. So, get this. I've gone 31.4 miles so far on this loop, and my truck is averaging 23.1 MPG. That's pretty darn impressive. How about you, Kate? From where I sit, that sounds abysmal, but I'm gonna hold my cards a little close to my chest on this one because this number is shaping up to be impressive from the Santa Cruz. Well, all right, now you're driving the new compact class of pickup trucks. Uh, and there's another truck in that class, right? That's right, there's also the Ford Maverick, which as a base vehicle is hybrid, which means it gets really good fuel economy, even better than the Santa Cruz, but the Santa Cruz is a truck that we actually own and that we've been testing long term, so this is what we're driving today. Now Case, you normally drive a Cummins, <laughs> so what do you feel about being the smallest of the truck? Yeah, I mean, for better and for worse, this is not a very trucky feeling vehicle. That means that it's really easy to drive, easy to park on regular roads and, and streets and parking lots, but it doesn't give you that nice trucky feel that I'm used to. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking right over the top of your truck. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty much like a SUV or a crossover with a bed. Under the hood of the compact truck, you have the most compact engine here. It's a 2.5 liter turbo, smart stream as they call it, with an eight speed dual clutch transmission, 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. So this is a surprisingly sprightly little truck. Nathan, you are in the brand new Nissan Frontier. It is a midsize truck. What does that compete with? This truck is one of the reasons why Toyota stepped up their timing when it comes to switching the Tacoma to a more modern engine and platform. I'm special and that's because I have the only vehicle here that doesn't have a turbocharger on it. Right. This is, by the way, almost brand new, a 3.8 liter V6 that puts out 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque. 
that's not too bad considering it's a mid-sized truck and it has an almost new 9-speed automatic transmission, both of which proving to be very economical. I suspect that I'm going to be kicking the butts on this. Heavy-duty trucks are a lot of things. They're great towing rigs. They haul a boatload of payload, but they're not aerodynamic. But I can do this, make it a little bit more aero. Well, this is funny. The biggest and the heaviest truck, the heavy-duty, has a mirror you can flip down. Yes, Roman. But my half-ton, actually, I, I think I'm at a disadvantage because it has the biggest mirror. I can do this, but it's still gigantic. Almost all of these trucks have very road-oriented tires, which is going to be good for fuel efficiency, but the Frontier, being more of an off-road truck, is a little bit of an outlier with its hand-cooked Dynapro tires that are definitely more aggressive. It sucks! All right, Andre, you are driving your own personal truck. So, you've got a horse in this race. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you this. When you chose the Ford, you chose a hybrid. Was there a reason for that? Yeah, there was a big reason. It was the latest generation of the most popular pickup truck in the land, the Ford F-150, and it was also the first year of the hybrid. Tell me, you've owned this truck now for a year. Are you happy with it? Yeah, it's actually almost a year and a half now, uh, pushing close to that. I am very happy. Um, it does prefer around city driving because the electric motor really comes into play um, in the city. And I'm actually going to tell you my number as well. It, it dropped a little bit. Um, it's now 26.8. Um, so um, it was a little bit higher before, uh, but now after some high speed, um, well, highway driving, it's going a little bit lower. This F-150 has a very high tech power plant. It's a twin turbocharged V6 and it also has an electric motor. Combined 430 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. It has a 10-speed automatic. I also have an eco mode that I will be using today. Of course, four-wheel drive here as well. They do have one other advantage. I have a double chin. Well, actually, the Ford F-150 has a double chin. I hope I don't. Um, actually, over 45 miles an hour, it actually extends down, making my truck more aerodynamic on the highway. That should be great. This heavy duty Cummins is one of only three heavy duty trucks out there. So there's of course the Chevy uh, and the Ford Power Stroke uh, and they're you know going head to head and these rigs are I think really good for two things payload and towing. Would you agree guys? Yeah absolutely I mean the heavy duty truck I mean that's when you get the really big payload number is over 2,000 pounds and above that's where you get really high tow ratings you know, some of the dually trucks get, you know, over 30,000 pounds of towing, so uh, you're in a truly working truck. One never thinks of heavy-duty trucks as fuel efficient, but you know what? This engine is just kind of loping along at barely 2,000 RPM. Actually, I'm only at 1,600 RPM, so I'm thinking I've got a good shot at this. Under the hood of the Ram is a 6.7 liter straight six Cummins. It puts out 370 horsepower and 850 pound foot of torque. It's paired to a six speed automatic transmission. It's four wheel drive, just like the other three trucks. But best of all, this Cummins just chugs along on the highway. Low RPM, hopefully giving me great diesel economy. You know what, we're here at Fort Morgan, gentlemen. I say we turn around. I'm not sure going any farther is gonna give us any better numbers. Uh, plus this is, you know, a good point to turn around before we get into the middle of nowhere Colorado. Agreed, uh, agreed. How about we uh, get a little bit of water break? Head on back and find out exactly which of these trucks is the most fuel efficient. I think I know which one it is. Okay, just because you got the smallest truck, you don't have to have the biggest ego. <laughs> you know what they say about guys with a uh, small truck? I don't know what they uh, say about guys with small trucks, but I do know what they say about guys with big trucks. <laughs> Oop, I walked into that one.
All right, well, the truck says we've gone 160.9 miles at 23.3, Andre. That's what you got? That's what the truck says. But what did the pump say? I don't know, I gotta fill it up. <laughs> okay. It's gonna say something different, I bet. So 23.3, 160.9 okay. miles. Got it. Right. My truck agrees on the mileage. All right, well, let's fill it up. Yes. We're paying $5.35 a gallon for diesel, which is expensive. I don't know why it's more than a dollar expensive than gasoline. Usually they track about the same. Sometimes diesel's even cheaper, but in this wacky world we live in, diesel has become more expensive. All right, here we go. So 30 seconds, we'll wait. Yep. And double click. All right, and we're going to do this in order, right? So we'll do the big truck first, then uh, your truck, then the medium truck, and then finally... Uh, Small. Yeah. All right, here we go. $42 and counting. That's it. 44.43 at 8.307 gallons, Andre. Do the math, All right. please. So we went 160.9 miles. Yep. Divide by your gallons. Equals 19.369. 19.4. So your computer was way optimistic. My computer said 20 over 23 miles a gallon. 19.4. Dang! Eighty-seven is four dollars and forty-nine cents a gallon. My my truck says twenty-six point one. Well, it's already much better. It's twenty-seven dollars. Oh, it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, we already know the answer to that one. Okay, so same distance, one hundred and sixty point nine divided by. 6.169 equals 26.1! Dude, Nathan, the Ford is on the money! That's rare. Yeah, right on the money, look at that. Well, we were wondering if it was a gas station or my truck. Apparently it's my truck. <laughs> it's not the gas station. 25.6 miles per gallon, but but my distance isn't the same as yours. Mine's almost two miles less. No idea. Should take a shortcut? <laughs> That's what I was kind of wondering. Like, did I, maybe I cut those turns a little finer than you uh, guys. You were apexing better. <laughs> right, so I had more of a direct line. No doubt. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so same miles, 160.9 divided by 7.020 equals 22.9. But, but it said 25.6 inside. Oh. How can there be such a discrepancy? <laughs> I've been asking that same question. All right, you wanna know what my computer said? Yeah, what did your computer say? I'll tell you, 31.6. Oh, oh, 30, over 30. 31.6. 31.6. Oh, that's not good. Oh, look at that. That's already, that's already right. the lowest number. Right, do the math, Andre. Okay, for case, 160.9 miles. We're using the same distance. Divide by 5.1. 97 equals 30 point actually 31 because you're rounding up I mean what did the computer say 31.6 so it's so pretty just a pretty little close. bit off yeah. but, but pretty close yes yeah, uh, but he won yeah but can he haul ass and tow big can haul ass, he can tow big. <laughs> <laughs> he can tow very medium to mild. He can tow about 5,000 pounds, maybe if he's lucky. Yeah. How much can I tow, Andre? 20,000. That's right, yeah. I'm going to remain quiet on this one because I'm like in the middle. But I will say this none of you guys have the extra little grab bar in the back. You have a sport bar. I have a sport bar and you don't. That, that obviously constitutes loss, which is why 
came in third. With fuel prices through the roof, uh, the answer is if you get want a hybrid. A, no, the answer <laughs> is if you want a small truck, get yourself a new compact truck. If you want good fuel economy, you don't have to. Well, you can haul ass, but you can't tow big. See you guys next time. Ciao. driving from here, just outside of Golden, Colorado, all the way to Moab to the White Room Trail. If you want to class up something immediately, trust me on this. I have focused on safety, security, and functionality. So for some people, that's about half a car payment right there. We're here on the White Rim Trail, and I think there is no more beautiful road in the entire world. Yeah, there are like three cars going off the road here. Wait, what? They can go slow? Hell no. Now this is when you really want a vehicle that's in perfect mechanical condition when you're navigating the side of a cliff. This is functional. Well, welcome to the Escalade at night. That is a metal hinge which pokes you right in the middle of the back. It was extremely cold last night. The food on this trip was spectacular. I forgot we had five big guys. It's 2022, 100 bucks will get you an apple. Ah, this should be on. That's a little bit, but whoa! I do not like shelf roads, even when, well, I mean, 30 feet is a big enough clip to probably kill you. By the way, I wanted to show you, this is after waiting a moment or two or three or six. A lot of dust, very hard to see through. All right, come on, straight on. I'm not gonna let you go off the cliff, do Getting lightheaded. <laughs>